Hi everybody, my name is Travis McHenry and I am the creator of the Oracle of Heaven and Hell. Today I'm going to be showing you some techniques for reading with this deck and I created these techniques myself. They're pretty unique to, to actually re working with this deck. First things first, uh, you've got the velvet uh, carrying bag here. These go free with the Kickstarter campaign. And uh, the seal on it is the Seal of Solomon. You can see the difference between the Seal of Solomon and the standard Star of David is that the um, triangles are actually interwoven with each other. So you've got two separate shapes there. One is uh, conceivably made of iron uh, to confuse and control the demons. And the other one is made out of brass, which would confuse or really just influence uh, the angels. So when they're interwoven like this, it's a great symbol to work with angels and demons at the same time. So that's on the bag, it's also on the box. Of course, the other side is just that. Now one kind of cool aspect of the cards is, first of all, as you can see, it's got each card has an angel on one side and then a demon on the other. And along with the actual image of the angel or the demon, uh, are the sigils, the names, of course, the um, their goetic or Kabbalistic number, and then what that angel or demon stands for on an astrological plane. Uh, in this case, um, you've got uh, divine power for the angel, and delay is the negative aspect of that uh, astrological line. Now, on the other side of the card is the um, again that seal of Solomon. And the interesting thing about this deck, it's designed in such a way where if you only want to read with the angels or you only want to read with the demons, you can actually do that um, simply by the way you hold the card. So all the demons are, you know, sort of gold triangle facing upward and all the angels are the um, silver triangle facing upward. So you can sort of stack the deck, if you will, uh, depending on what kind of reading you're looking for, or if you just want to work with the angels or just want to work with the demons. So we'll shuffle these up here and I'll show you a couple of the, uh, the spreads that I've created. One of the interesting things about shuffling this deck is if you're going to be using it like a standard tarot deck, and you want to take the reversed positions into consideration, That's a this is a really good deck for that because the demon side of the card basically represents that reversed position. And so I don't just recommend, you know, doing like a, a standard shuffle like that. You can also do, even this will change the outcome of your reading, taking the cards and just turning them up like that. And maybe doing that a couple times just for fun as you're shuffling. All right. So usually I would recommend cutting and shuffling three times. So let's do this again. All right. So the first, um, the first spread that I'm going to show you is the circles of hell. I also call this Dante's Inferno spread and you'll see why in a second. Okay. So now because we are for the circles of hell, you really just want to focus on the demon side of the card. So I'm just going to do myself a favor here and just turn the card. So it's uh, I'm trying to get, keep it in the shot, turn it. So it's, it's right side facing up or demon side facing up. So we're basically going to create four rows, and again, I'm just turning these so that the demon is facing up because this is going to be a sort of demon exclusive reading uh, for this particular spread. Here we go. So what you're left with, let me just move these up a little bit. So what you're left with is a downward sort of spiral uh, that somewhat resembles, you know, the, the levels of hell, uh, starting at, you know, sort of the earthly plane of existence and getting closer down to the pit of hell or, or the devil or whatever you want to say. And what this represents for our purposes is going to be um, 
a, a going deeper into yourself. So if you've got a specific issue that maybe you're trying to figure out how do I overcome this problem or um, you know something that you want to work on in yourself, this is a great spread to help you do that. It's all about internal. It's about you. And, um, and it doesn't tell the future. It's, it's just about what's going on in your life. So the top level is generally going to be external stuff, surface level stuff, and um, possibly things that are sort of going on in your mind, um, intellectual realm, all, all things that the rest of the world can kind of see. And again, because we're just looking at the demons, we just look at the top part. So in this case, we've got immorality, impossible plans, malevolent behavior, and false testimony. Um, so if I were looking at this for myself, which I didn't really put too much into the shuffle or whatever, uh, so we could say, I don't know, I've been lying, I've been doing bad things, I have crazy dreams, and maybe I've been living my life immorally uh, in some respect. And I guess there's probably a little bit of truth in all those. So that's the external stuff, things that are sort of around your, your intellectual uh, life. And then we move to the next one. Um, this is going to be stuff that's, that's closer to your heart, um, your emotions, your, your sort of that internal um, ticking of your, of your, of your heart. Uh, traitors and conspiracy, ignorance and scandal, which, you know, I, I don't know, is my love life perfect? I've shared with you guys before some, some personal things in my, in my love life, and, and maybe there's something to that there. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to go too personal. <laughs> this is just a demonstration. Uh, next, you've got uh, Voyage by Sea and Disability and Immorality. Now, on this plane here, we're getting down to sort of the kind of raw physicality of, of, of you, um, kind of the physical plane of existence inside your body, though. Um, Voyage by Sea and Disability and Immorality. It's interesting that immorality is, is coming up twice in the reading, uh, once on the external physical plane and once on the internal physical plane. So you can take that for what it's worth. The Voyage by Sea, I don't really know how that fits into this particular reading, but again, this is just a sample. And then finally at the bottom, this is the key thing that, that I would want to work on. Uh, disregarding rules is what uh, folklore stands for and this is you know what's at the center of the issue what the, is at the center of the problem and you know if, if you read this and, and you see what this card means in this case disregarding rules and I am notorious for not following the rules and just making up my own as I go along so I definitely can understand this uh, if you don't understand what it means, my advice would be to sort of meditate on that, you know, think about it, uh, pray about it, whatever you want to do, and try to relate it to what's going on on the other planes of, of existence here. And try to see if they can circle back around and if dealing with whatever this might be, I mean, in my case, it's pretty easy. I need to follow the rules. Uh, <laughs> see if there's a way that that could uh, solve your issue or, you know, sort of help you be a better person. So this is the, the basic spread here for the circles of hell. Okay, so I just showed you how to do a reading with the demon side of the card. Now we will focus on the angel side of the card. So I've already shuffled this deck, and this uh, spread is called the Stairway to Heaven. And again, we're just going to turn the cards so that they are uh, facing angel side up regardless of which way I actually turn them. Okay, I'll have to move the cards a little bit here so we can see everything. All right, almost, I'll, I'll move that one back into the shot. So starting at the bottom, um, this first level is going to be what this particular spread, what this reading is going to be about. Um, whatever the issue is, you might not even know the issue exists, but this is what this is going to all be in relation to, or, or is this sort of base foundation. You can see we're moving upwards, the stairway to heaven uh, is, is kind of what this is supposed to represent. So just looking at the top part, rectification and protection. Uh, what's interesting is the rectification card came up for me in a reading uh, that I did earlier today uh, with the angel evoking tarot. So it's kind of funny that that would uh, come up again. I guess I've got something to, to rectify. Um, rectification and protection. So maybe as we go through the reading, uh, I can try and expand on that a little bit.
So this is what the issue is, what the reading is going to be about. Next is, um, this is what's happening on the earthly plane. So sort of what are the influences uh, around you and what is influencing this issue uh, today on the earthly plane? We've got divine blessings and prosperity. Now, I'm in a position in my life where I feel like I am getting a lot of divine blessings and uh, Cathel happens to be one of the angels that I've been calling on a lot. Uh, so I do feel like that particular angel is around me. And also prosperity, I, I feel like I'm, I'm in a very prosperous phase in my life and I would feel like this is, this is extremely accurate for what's happening on earthly plane. And I'm just gonna move the cards down so we can see these a little bit better. Next, we've got creation of all things and fame and renown. All right, so this level here, second to the top, this is what's happening on a spiritual plane or a celestial plane. Um, you know, this is another card that has been coming up for me a lot. I don't know why. Sitel, the creation of all things and uh, fame and renown. Uh, this could be what's happening in the future. It could simply be the spiritual forces around me. Um, there's a couple of different interpretations that you could put here. You know, I'm an extremely creative person. I've been trying to, to bring more uh, projects into the world. And uh, I would like to think that the angels are around me helping me with that process that I'm going through. And the fame and renown, you know, this isn't something I'm really seeking out these days. Uh, I used to be an actor back in the day, but not anymore. But, you know, maybe the uh, celestial sphere, the heavenly sphere, has got something better in, in store for me. And then I'm going to move this down just a little bit more. So then the top two cards, this is kind of going to be your outcome or the thing you're focusing on, for crying out loud. So this uh, card, number 57 here, uh, O's and Nemaya, these two cards are constantly coming up, or this card, I should say, these two entities are constantly coming up for me in the highest position. And I don't know why. I, I, I've tried to sort of meditate on this and figure it out. Um, I'm not quite there yet. I don't understand. But so anyways, the top uh, two cards are kind of the outcome or where you want to be moving, what direction you want to be moving in, and what you want to focus on. But it's also the highest possible outcome. You know, So this is generally going to be a, a positive thing. Uh, perception of unity, which would mean sort of it actually relates perfectly to creation of all things. These two are very closely uh, connected because perception of unity is like understanding the way the world works. Um, if it were a single card in the tarot deck, it would be card 21, the world. And then finally, discernment, which it's really interesting that if you look back at what the, so this is the last card, discernment. If you look at, back at what the original cards were, um, rectification and protection. So I would say that there is um, some kind of, of rectification that I need to be undergoing, and I don't even know what it is yet because discernment is in my, in my top card here. I need to figure this out. So what this sort of spread, and again, this is just an example, you know, it shouldn't be taken too seriously. Um, what this spread would sort of be telling me is uh, related to, I would say, you know, the things that I'm creating, um, I need to figure out how that relates to some kind of um, rectification that I need to that I need to undergo. Uh, 